All right guys, so what is going on? American Abroad here and finally picked up the GS, the 2019 GS uh, 1250. Absolutely loving this bike so far, but uh, I do have some crash bars to put on this thing. They are the Motea crash bars. I'm trying them out. They're an inexpensive crash bar, so wanted to see, you know, uh, Tourtech make great crash bars, SW Motec great makes great crash bars, but uh, these ones were a little bit more budget friendly. They were about, you know, around 215 euros I think so went ahead and grabbed these and I'm gonna stick them on the bike right now and I couldn't find any tutorials online on how to do this so I figured I would make one here and hopefully it is helpful okay so here's what they look like when they come packaged um, not you know it's not not bad packaging um, but actually when I ordered the uh, heed crash bars from my last bike the Triumph Tiger um, the heed crash bars came really nicely packaged and not only did they have bubble wrap they also had foam wrapped around the pipes so I did appreciate that it was that extra little um, thought that went into it but they did send some instructions again heed sends much better instructions these literally just have pictures and it's a little bit hard to understand at certain points I mean it's pretty basic you know take bolts in put bolt put new bolts in take bolts out put new bolts in but the other ones actually had written instructions as well as pictures which I really appreciate that you know kind of step by step walking me through it so I did like that a little bit of a miss there but let's check it out let's see how easy it is to put on so to start you do need like these hex wrenches I wish I could find wrenches but the shops over here in Portugal are a bit limited so I had to go with these I think that should be enough for now um, you know, I would love to have actually a wrench, but these are just like kind of Allen key type things. So, um, yeah, so we'll try these out. If I'm calling these the wrong thing, hex wrenches or whatever, um, I'm sure you guys can correct me online. All right, so something I will say, the build quality seems pretty decent on these things, but, um, you know, they have like these extra bolt things over here. I guess they, I don't know if they're making this for multiple years or something, but just kind of seems to stick off to the side there, which I don't like. I want something that's just clean. Like, just give me that bit right there. Don't give me all that extra garbage on the side. So that's kind of a negative. They do seem really sturdy. Like they're pretty bulky. They're pretty uh, thick and everything. The color's great, but I think that they kind of stick off the engine just a little bit too far, like a little bit further away. You know, I'd like a gap maybe like that. These things kind of stick out like that. So let's see, let's see what they look on, how they look on. Okay, so a little bit garbage instructions here, like you can see that they kind of just have a blank space right here of where the bolt's coming out, like saying take this bolt out. But um, yeah, that's a, li a little bit garbage. Like I know which bolt needs to come out. Um, this is a T50, that's the size that this is, T50 that's coming out right here. And it is the uh, second bolt, um, right, kind of right above, there's a three bolts right above the kickstand. Let me see if I can get you a better view. Yeah, so it's this bolt right here that's coming out. I don't know if you guys, yeah, it looks like you can see that okay. So that's a T50, that's what's taking this out. It's a hot puppy, the bike was hot. <laughs> Okay, so here's what you've got with the kit. You've got two lock washers, and then you've got, um, I guess, a couple different size bolts here. It doesn't even tell you what size the bolts are on the, on the freaking instructions, so that's kind of frustrating. Um, kind of Ikea-style instructions here, you know, bare minimum, just enough to frustrate you. So I just line them up here so I know what size. Um, this is the bolt that just came out, so I'm guessing it's these. Um, yeah, it kind of seems like it fits. So and you've got two of these, I guess we'll call them medium size washers, and then you got one big old fat one. So let's see where those go, because the instructions are not quite clear. All right, so we're not tightening anything up all the way. We're just making it loose. Um, I did have to put a spacer behind this. Let's see if I can see. Just looks like a spacer, and that's it, and the bolt. So solid for now. Now let's do the front part. All right, so as you can see, I don't know, this is kind of a, a big freaking distance here. Like that's one thing, I don't know if you guys can see this. 
Like, look at look at the distance between the. I mean, it doesn't look much on the on the video, but that's kind of a big distance. Let me see if I can show you guys. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's normal, but I, I feel like the normally they kind of are a little bit closer. That just kind of seems like it's sticking pretty far off there, man. All right, so now we just have to put this top bolt in. I guess these two extra holes, I'm wondering, I did order the uh, the top protection as well, the upper crash guards, um, but I, I'm not gonna probably install them right now, but I'm guessing that those two extra holes that I was complaining about, I'm guessing that's for the upper crash guards. I'll, I'll take it apart and look at it in just a minute. Okay, so here's something a little bit tricky. Um, in the instructions, as you can see, uh, we actually have to fit this top part behind the engine. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's kind of a hard camera angle, but there's this silver piece here, and the black piece actually has to go behind it. So that's what was kind of confusing me. Didn't know, you know, to what extent I needed to follow the instructions, but that just seems to make sense to me, the way the instructions are laid out. Um, it looks to me, I don't know if you can see it here, but it looks to me as if you put the screw through the silver piece and into the bar, and then you've got the lock washer at the back. So that's what I'm gonna do. It makes sense, everything seems to fit, and it does fit a little bit closer to the engine that way, so my, my complaints are a little bit mitigated now, but, um, but yeah, it does seem to fit a little bit closer to the engine now, so I'm happy about that. So for this one, we're gonna use one of the smaller bolts that came with it. This is a, it just calls it a B. So letter B, here we go, <laughs> and a lock washer. This is where spanner wrenches come in really useful. Um, you know, you've got that little wrench-like part at the end here where you can just so when you're working in tight spaces with these uh, tiny washers and everything. I would say if you're gonna do any work on a motorcycle, like you need these, you absolutely need these, they're imperative. So, that is one side done. Not bad, not bad looking. It looks pretty good. Pretty easy to assemble. And got rid of a little bit of that gap actually. It's coming down quite a bit from where I thought it was gonna sit. So I'm, I'm much happier with that, much happier with that. I just have to tighten everything down, but I'm gonna look at the upper guards now. And since I've got some time, I might go ahead and do those. If you're gonna put uppers or lowers on at the same time, it's always good just to get everything situated first and then, um, and then tighten everything down. Because if you tighten everything down like super tight, you don't have any wiggle room or anything. And, and sometimes you just need a little bit of room just to fit bolts and things like that. So let's have a go. I'm gonna do the other side now. So let's go around to the other side. One tip, uh, maybe try and keep these bolts, you know, uh, in case you ever decide to go to something different or you just wanna take them off or you're gonna sell the bike and get a different one and you wanna keep them, you know, keep them in a little baggie. I normally just use the baggie that the manufacturer sends me for the crash guards. And that way, if you ever want to take them off, you still have these bolts. Got three size, got three size bolts left. Um, so as you can see there, since they don't really give us a classification for the bolts or like what measurement they are, I could measure them for you guys, but I'm too lazy, so I'm not going to do that. Let's just get this puppy fitted. You only have one washer on this side, so don't be freaked out when you get over here and you're like, oh, I only have one, wa one uh, spacer left. Sorry, not a washer, spacer. No washers come with this kit. So um, yeah, you only have one. The big fat one goes on this side. And I think the reason because of that is if you look at the top of the bike, I'll show you real quick. I don't know if you guys can see that. But actually, the, on one of the sides, the engine isn't perfectly straight across. 
So the engine, if you're sitting on the bike, so if you're sitting on the bike, the engine kind of does this. It's not like perfectly straight across. It kind of does one of these numbers very, very slightly. But if you're sitting on the bike, you can tell. And I don't know why BMW does that. I'm sure there's some reason, but, um, but yeah, so I'm guessing that's the reason why this side fits slightly different. So another key note, um, when you're installing these, make sure that before you put in both the bottom bolts, like you need to have this top part back behind the silver part, like we were talking about on the other side, because otherwise you're gonna have a lot of trouble uh, trying to maneuver this thing around. So make sure you put this back first and then screw in your second bottom bolt. I always like to put one bolt in because that kind of holds it for me. And then before I put in the second one, I went ahead and slid this behind there and then I can put this bottom one in and then when I start doing the top, it's held right in place. Okay, so it was just as I suspected. These two extra little holes here do have a purpose. They're not for a different type bike. Um, it actually does fit um, this part here. This is actually for the other side, but um, you know, they fit on like that. But as you can see, those two holes are gonna be right for here. And it would go on the other side of the bike just like this. So I'm not gonna fit these today just because I don't have time. But yeah, I think these are gonna look really, really good. I actually really like how the lowers look. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up, ride it for like this for a couple days. And then maybe over the weekend, I'll be able to have some time to fit these. It's a little bit more complicated. You have to get up underneath the front fairing and kind of do a couple of things because there is a support bar that goes across there. So it's a little bit more complicated doing the uppers than the lowers. Um, but I think the lowers look pretty good and I'm pretty happy with the quality and I think they look great. And actually that spacing problem I was talking about, um, as I installed them, it went away. So not as big of an issue. All right, so here's the front view of the bike with the with the Motea crash guards on there. I actually think it looks pretty good. Not too shabby. Overhead view. Kind of what it looks like to sit on the bike. That's what they look like there. Spacing is not near as bad as I thought. It's actually quite normal. So not a big deal there. I thought they were gonna hang out pretty far, um, but they actually look pretty good. I really like them. Motea, good job. Making an inexpensive crash guard for the BMW GS, which is not easy because when you buy one of these bikes, it just seems like all the parts and all the prices just go sky high. All right, so I think these Moteas hit a home run. Of course, I haven't crashed with them at the moment, um, so but they actually seem pretty sturdy like you know, there's no movement or anything in them. I mean, these things are pretty solid. I'm really, really happy with the build quality of these things. And yeah, I think, I think they're gonna hold up great for what I need them for, and they're super inexpensive. So I was super surprised at the build quality for the price. Okay, so something that's really great about the Motea Crash Guards is not only were they pretty easy to fit, the instructions did seem a little bit Ikea-like. You know, they don't have much to them and they don't really give you any written instructions, which is kind of annoying. But once I started getting in there, there was one particular bolt that I had a problem with because they didn't actually give me full instructions um, of like what bolt goes where written out. So I did actually have one bolt in the wrong place. So I had to go back and switch that out. It was a bolt that, um, you know, on one side you have two of the same bolts on the bottom and on the left side you're using two different bolts on the bottom. So just keep that in mind. Um, I can't actually tell you really which one. I think you're using two C's on one side, uh, letter C, and then the other two are on the other side. So just a little bit of a change because things are a little bit different from the left to the right side. So they do of course have to change the bolts and you're using two spacers on one side and one spacer on the other side. On the right side you're only using one spacer. The crash guards are really good quality, really, really happy with that. Um, I think Motea hit it out of the park making a crash guard that is this quality for this price. I think you're looking at about 250 US dollars, around 230 euros for these things, and they were great. They're from Germany, bikes also from Germany. I think the Germans put out good quality products. And uh, like, you know, they're powder coated, they're black, which I think looks great on the bike and uh, they were pretty easy to install once I kind of got everything in place. So, you know, kind of a little bit of finagling, I would say install time around 45 minutes to an hour once you get everything sorted. So not really bad. I think the upper crash guard's gonna take a little bit longer because you do have a little, uh, you have to get up underneath the front fairing and attach a bar that goes across the top. But other than that, it went on super easy. And as you guys can see, the bike looks 
great with the crash guards on there. So really, really happy with how it turned out. So if you guys do have any questions for me on the Motea crash guards, put them in the comments. If you have a GS or any other bike that you're looking for something a little bit more cost effective, I think these guys are making really good quality stuff. Heed crash guards, H-E-E-D, also make really good crash guards. But the problem is, is I didn't like how they looked on this bike. Um, there's a particular reason I went with the Moteas and one was price. The second thing I'll actually show you guys, uh, I'll put it up on the screen right now, but basically there is a bar that goes across the middle of the of the head. And so the Heed crash guards, it's like the Tour Tech crash guards, it goes up and around the head, it kind of outlines the head. Well, if, if I'm off-roading, which I'm not gonna do much of, but if for some reason I drop the bike in uneven ground, the head is still completely exposed. So what I liked about these crash guards is it actually has a bar going across, kind of more underneath and across the middle of the head. So the head is more protected in my opinion if it goes over. If the bike does, you know, uh, end over end flip, then it might have a problem. But um, if it goes end over end, I've got more, more issues than just the head to look at. So <laughs> anyways, that's kind of why I went with the Moteas because I like the look of them and I think that they protect a little bit better in that area. So other than that, absolutely loving the new GS. It's, it's well, not new to me. It's a 2019 GS 1250. Loving this bike, really, really stable. Just feels super planted on the ground, um, but I'm really happy to have those crash guards on there now. I feel a little bit more secure. So, all right guys, thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Got some more content coming out. If you have any questions or new videos that you want me to put out, just throw that in the comments. I'd be happy to uh, oblige you guys if I get enough requests for something. Anyways, ride safe guys and we'll see you on the pavement.